Promo Cat here with a look at the next episode of the Friday Zone. And dream good all night long. Rise up and sing your song. Hey everyone, let's connect with a friend from the Terre Haute Children's Museum. Hi Caleb, how's it going? I've got my dum-dums and now you know how dum-dums are made. So check out the next episode of the Friday Zone, right now. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the WTIU Children's Programming Endowment, ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our community. And these Indiana Public Television stations. Thank you. Friday Zone, everyone. I'm Maya. And I'm Matt. We've got lots happening on today's show, Maya. Yep. We'll make mini rockets, tour a candy factory, and learn about a classic book titled 13 Clocks. Gadgets and gizmos aplenty. And we'll start with a song on, on the, the Friday, Friday Zone, Zone playlist. In the Friday Zone. Jump out of bed, splash water all over my head Brush them up my teeth and make sure my ears are clean These days you gotta be strong So I do a push-up and sing a song I pick on the guitar and stamp on the tambourine Always good to change my socks Know the tools in my toolbox Learn people good, but learn myself the best Don't get lonesome, stay glad Take a bath, wear some plaid, work when I can work, but don't forget to rest. Dream good all night long, rise up and sing your song. They say life is hard and they're not wrong, so keep that hope machine running strong. Adiole. Plan what you can plan, dance when you can, can laugh at yourself and make up your own jokes. A little bit of fun, a little bit of growth, hopefully a little bit of both. Love your ma, love your pa, and love all kinds of folks. Talk quiet and listen loud, teach humble and learn proud. Scuffle with the struggle and wrestle with the pain. Open homes, open blinds, open hearts, open minds. Let in the sunshine, let in the rain. Dream good all night long Rise up and sing your song They say life is hard and they're not wrong So keep that hope machine running strong Gotta keep that hope machine running strong Adiole Adiole Well, hello 
Hello there. I'm your host, Leo Dico, and welcome to Masterpieces of Children's Literature in Less Than a Minute. Excuse me, I'm just admiring my new and very expensive Apple Watch. Unfortunately, I'm having a tough time figuring out what time it is. For now, I guess it's two freckles past a hair. So today, I'm going to talk about the novel 13 Clocks by James Thurber. This story is about a royal total jerk of a guy, a duke, who lives in a castle with his good and beautiful niece, the Princess Sarah Linda. The Duke is also a complete cheapskate who doesn't like to pay his heating bills, which is what makes his castle so cold that all 13 clocks are frozen at 10 minutes to five. Now, a bunch of different dudes want to marry the princess, but the Duke gives them all impossible tasks to finish, which they all fail miserably. Then one day, Prince Zorn shows up disguised as a musician named Zingyu. Then he meets another interesting fellow named Golux. So Golux tells Zingyu that he will help him rescue the beautiful princess Sarah Linda. You see, the Duke wants Zingyu to bring him 1,000 jewels. No sweat, Zingyu says. He can get these from his father, but his pop's kingdom is far, far away. So. If Zingyu leaves now, he can be back in 99 days. Not so fast, says the Duke. You only have 99 hours. Also, the Duke demands that Zingyu unfreezes all 13 clocks and make them strike at five o'clock. What the darn, says Zingyu. So Zingyu and his buddy Golux visit a woman named Haga who has the ability to weep jewels. Gosh knows what happens when she has to blow her nose. Anywho, Haga has lost the ability to weep these jewels because she has cried so much. Now, Zingyu and Golix make her laugh tears of joy, but these are essentially worthless. They become so bummed out over this that Haga begins to cry and starts bawling out jewels again. These two guys get their 1,000 precious stones. Now, Zingyu and Golix head back to the castle of the evil duke, but he has thrown them a curveball. You see, Sarah Linda is not actually his niece, and he kidnapped her when she was a little girl. See, I told you he was a total jerk. Lots more stuff happens, so if you want to know more about 13 Clocks by James Thurber, I suggest you read it yourself. You'll be glad you did. I'm Leo D. Cook, and I'll see you next time on masterpieces of children's literature in less than a minute. Hey everyone, let's connect with a friend from the Terre Haute Children's Museum. Hi Caleb, how's it going? Oh, oh, sorry. Um, um, sorry about that, I was just cooling off during this uh, blazing hot summer that we're having. Uh, my name is Caleb, I am from the Terre Haute Children's Museum and I'm here to talk with you guys and do some activities that have to do with wind, which is just moving air. So let's think a little bit about how wind moves things. So you are going to want to grab a few things. You'll want to grab uh, some straws or maybe if you don't have straws, you could use like rolled up pieces of paper or something like that that are taped. Um, you will want to have some uh, molding clay or maybe play-doh might work out for you um, and you will want uh, scissors an important thing to know about the straws is that you're gonna want to have two different sizes so you're gonna want to have a straw that is a little bit bigger around than another so you can actually later uh, put them into that straw um, if you don't have different sizes of straw, again, you can use pieces of paper maybe that are a little bit bigger and you could tape it uh, around so you can fit the straw inside. Now, using these materials, we're gonna make our own kind of uh, air rocket with these. Um, so an optional thing that you could grab is something to aim at with your rocket. So you could either print out or draw your own target or bullseye. Um, 
and that can be something that you aim at. If not, you could always use, um, well, don't use your brother, sister, uh, or parents, uh, but you can always use something else in your house too to aim at. Um, a thing to know about uh, the scissors is that you might want to cut your straws to different lengths so that your uh, rocket works out. Um, like uh, mine here is just a little bit too long to work out, so I want mine to be a little bit shorter than this bigger straw that I have. Um, what you'll do with that modeling clay or play-doh is you, and this is pretty simple, you're just going to put it on one side of your smaller straw. Make sure it's the smaller one. What you're gonna end up doing, as you might have guessed, is you are going to be blowing your smaller straw that's been stopped up on one side out of the bigger straw. And you'll wanna be really safe with this, so make sure that you have something specific that you wanna aim at and do your best to hit the shot. Awesome, I'm gonna set up a target with these cups and try and shoot at it. Yep. All right, let's see what I got. Oops. <laughs> okay, so I didn't quite make it, but hopefully you guys have a little bit more uh, hot air or can blow out a little bit more air than I just did. Let me try. All right, ready everyone? That was, that was close. I think I need to be closer to the, to the cups. <laughs> All right, let's do one more try. We almost got there, it was so close. So I'm gonna move back to my uh, chair and I will be right back. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. Okay. Okay, so hopefully you guys had as much fun as I did learning about wind and the science of it. Have a wonderful day <laughs> and hopefully we'll see you around the Children's <laughs> Museum sometime soon, right? Yay, I did it! <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Caleb. That was awesome. The Friday's home Batter up. Now batting, number three, Jen in Novena. Strike. When people come to sporting events, they come to see the team on the field. But what about the team behind the scenes, keeping the athletes at peak performance? He's the athletic trainer for the Rochester Red Wings. It's his job to protect the players' bodies from injury and help them recover if they get hurt. Did you play sports as a kid? I did. What'd I you played play? baseball, I played football, I did some wrestling, I played basketball. When I got to a point where this was my best opportunity to continue on into sports. Is an athletic trainer and a personal trainer the same thing? Like, are you the person who shows me how to use weights the right way? Not necessarily. So an athletic trainer is more focused on prevention and rehabilitation of injuries, whereas a personal trainer focuses more on fitness, strength training, and conditioning. So Chris, why did you become an athletic trainer? I was always fascinated by sports, and I really wanted to still be a part of a sports team, even though I couldn't be a player. So are you a part of the team then? Like, do you get to travel with them? Absolutely. I'm with them every day of the year, every game, whether we're at home or on the road. I'm with the team. Brody. Chris. So can you show me some of the things you do with the players to get them ready? Absolutely. Let's head on down to the athletic training room and get to work. All right. So what are we going to be doing to JD here? So with JD today, we're just going to go through some simple arm stretches that would get him ready to play some baseball. Like what? Well, first of all, we'll start by just kind of stretching the front part of the shoulder. Okay. So with baseball players, the shoulder is obviously the most important part of their body because it assists with throwing, hitting, fielding. So we're just gonna help stretch the front part. And we're gonna come up and stretch the side. And then we can work on stretching the back side of the shoulder. What's the best part of your job? Best part of my job is 
sitting in the dugout and watching a baseball game from probably one of the best seats in the house. But it's also watching the guys get to the major leagues coming out of the minor leagues. I thought you were gonna say winning. <laughs> so Chris, besides stretching out the muscles, what else do you do to get the players ready for the games? A lot of times we'll also do some taping type stuff, whether it's adding support to the wrists or taping their ankle for extra support when they're running and doing some agility work. What's the most common injury in baseball? In baseball, it usually has to deal with the shoulder or the elbow. Pitching. Pitching. Of course. So Chris, yeah. quick quiz. How many muscles are in the human body? Human body has about 600 different muscles. How many bones? Between 206 and 208. How many of those are in the feet? 14. Tricky. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks for having me, Chris. This was great. I'm gonna go get ready for the game now. Absolutely, go yes, get them. bring it. I got it, I got it. I don't got it. And that's okay. As we learned today, you don't have to be on the field to be a part of the team. Athletic trainers like Chris have an important job to make sure every player is at peak performance. Our friends are here to show us how to make a fun and wearable crown out of a paper plate. We're going to need scissors, markers, and of course, a paper plate. First, fold your paper plate in half. Use your scissors to make three cuts while the plate is folded. Cut all the way up to the ruffled edge of the plate. You will need to open up the paper plate to make the final two cuts. Now you can decorate your crown. Our friends are going to use markers, but you can use paint, crayons, glitter, anything you want. When you're done, fold the triangles you cut out up and place your crown on your head where it belongs. And now we get out and about on a Friday Zone field trip. I'm Audrey and I'm here with Friday Zone Investigation. We're in Bryan, Ohio at the Spangler Candy Company where they make over 10 million dum-dums a day. We're gonna go check it out. Hey guys, we're inside now and we've got Stacy here and she's gonna tell us what's going on behind us. Dum-dums actually start um, from a mixture of sugar and corn syrup. So back behind me, you'll see the kettle where those two ingredients start to form the candy part of the dum-dum. Okay, 
Daisy. Can you tell us where we are now? Yep. Um, behind us, you'll see where the dum-dums are inspected on a conveyor belt, and then they're taken up into a weighing funnel where they're weighed and dropped into the proper packaging sizes. From here, they're boxed up to be shipped out. So we're gonna go see the boxes now? Yep, we'll see the boxes now. And see them all done? Awesome. All right, so now you know how these are made. Awesome, thank you so much, Stacey. You're Thanks welcome. everybody at Spangler. I've got my dum-dums, and now you know how dum-dums are made. Woo! We'll be right back with more here in the Friday Zone. Zarg! Come here, Zarg! I have something to show you! Uh, what? What is it? <laughs> Come out here and I'll show you, silly! Uh, I'm coming! I'm coming! Just a minute, <laughs> Peggy Girl Child! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my mom bought me this new dress and backpack for my first day of school. Oh. What do you think? Uh, wow. Peggy girl, it's beautiful. Do you think so? Uh, yes, Peggy, without a doubt. Peggy is going to look all grown up. I'm so nervous, Zarg. What if the other kids don't like me? They'll love you, Peggy girl child. Oh, I don't know. Just be you. Peggy is all that Peggy needs to be. But what if they make fun of me? Then they are not the friends for Peggy. Mm. Don't worry, Peggy girl. And if anyone bullies Peggy, just remember Zarg and put on a brave face. A monster face. A monster face? Yes, a monster face. Oh. See, you, 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 you scrunch up your nose, squint <laughs> your eyes, and throw in a low growl for good measure. I don't want to scare the other kids. Well then, just put on a brave face. Be strong and face your fears. Uh, I don't know, Zarg. Here, here. Listen to this, Peggy girl child. What? What is it? A foot. A and light-hearted, I take to the open road. <gasps> Healthy, free, the world before me. <sighs> the long brown path before me leading wherever I choose. Wherever I choose? Yes, <gasps> Peggy, wherever you choose. <gasps> mm. Henceforth, I ask not good fortune. I am myself good fortune. <sighs> Henceforth, I whimper no more, postpone no more, mm -hmm. need nothing, mm -hmm. done with indoor complaints, libraries, querulous criticisms, strong and content, I travel the open road. Hmm, I see. Hmm. Put on a brave face. That's right, Peggy girl child, that's right. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. The earth that is sufficient. I do not want the constellations any nearer. I know they are very well where they are. I know they suffice for those who belong to them. I get it, Zarg. I just need to be me. Mm -hmm. ah. Yes, Peggy, be the very best Peggy you may be. People will either like Peggy for Peggy or not, but either way, that is okay. Thank you, Zarg. Mm -hmm. Just remember, if you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, if you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone, and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. <laughs> Welcome to Animal Yoga. My name is Priscilla and I'm here to practice yoga together with you. Let's take a deep belly breath in and check how are we feeling in this very moment. Now bring our hands in front of our hearts. Namaste. Ready to begin?
Today we are going to be camels. Camels live in the desert and they need a lot of courage. Courage means to lead with our hearts. So we are going to learn how to open our heart and become camels. So let's kneel, go on our knees. And we're going to tuck our toes under like this, making our heels a little higher. All right, so we're going to bring our belly button in and we are going to bring our hands in our lower back. And we're going to breathe in and we're going to bend backwards. And then if this is very easy for you, you can try to reach your heel. And this, if this is still very, very easy, you can relax your head towards the back. And then let's breathe deeply. Slowly come back and we're gonna rest by a rock. So heels, uh, sit on your heels and rest your head down. Take a deep breath in. And now we're gonna sit up. And now we're gonna bring our hand on our heart. And with our open heart, we're gonna send love to everybody that needs it. So when we breathe in, we feel the love in our open hearts and we breathe out. We are sending love to everybody. Thank you for joining me. May all be peaceful. May all be well. May all be happy. Namaste. Thanks for joining us on the Friday Zone. Remember to check out our website, fridayzone.org, to see past episodes and clips from the show. Yeah, you can also send us an email to zone at indiana.edu or find us on social media at The Friday Zone. But for now, remember to live, learn, and play The Friday Zone way. Let's do our secret handshake. Production support for The Friday Zone is provided by the WTIU Children's Programming Endowment ensuring quality children's programming for future generations of Hoosiers. Learn more at indianapublicmedia.org slash kidsfund. WFYI Public Media, inspiring Indiana with high quality educational content since 1970. By sharing stories and connecting people, WFYI inspires the best in our community. And these Indiana Public Television stations. Thank you. Do you cool cats have the perfect idea for the Friday Zone? Want to share a hobby or let us know what's happening in your town? Then contact us on our website at fridayzone.org or send an email to zone at indiana.edu. Right meow!